Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And today we're gonna do a little review. We're gonna do a review, it's gonna be a very, very quick review, and I'm gonna explain why in just a second. We're gonna do a review of Jackie Collins' Chances, which I don't have because I read it on my Kindle, and Jackie Collins' Lucky. So, if you don't know, which you don't know is a lot, um, I started a book club several months ago. It is called Peter's Book Club. I also have an assistant, Mel, and she is doing so much over there. I'm so thankful to her. Um, she's awesome, and we text, and I'm like, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? So she's awesome. Anyway, um, we took a little hiatus because a lot of people were saying they were having a hard time catching up. I myself was having a hard time catching up. And so tomorrow, we are going to do a live stream at 4 p.m., Eastern Standard Time book discussion, and we're going to talk about Endless Night by Richard Lehman, Chances by Jackie Collins, and Lucky by Jackie Collins, and I have finally caught up with all three of them. So, um, I'm very, very excited, and uh, I just wanted to get on here today and do a very quick review. Um, I don't really want to talk about the books at length, because I'm going to talk about it on the live stream tomorrow, and... I had said previously that I was going to do a live stream and then do a, like a whole thing, but I'm going to do the Endless Night review afterwards, and I don't want to do two review videos back to back, so I'm going to put this one up today. Um, let me tell you a little of the history of why I chose these books. So when I was growing up, you know, I've talked on here a lot about the fact that my mom really got me into reading when I was a kid. We would go to the library. She let me pick out all the books I wanted to pick out on and on and on, and um as I got older, I started reading, you know, the Judy Bloom books and all that kind of stuff. But when I was like, I think in ninth grade, I was on vacation with my dad and my stepmom. And um, I was reading a book and I had like, I don't even remember what the book was, but I had finished it. And my stepmom had brought like three hardback books. I still to this day, I can see it. Like every time I, you know, like would be at their house, she'd always have like a bottle of nail polish sitting on top of one of her books because she always read hardback books. I'm sure she still reads hardback books. I just am not there all the time to see it anymore like I was when I was growing up living there. But she would always have nail polish on it and she would like take the cover off. And I do this now and I think it's because of my stepmom. She would take the cover off of the hardback book and then she would like do her nails while she was reading. And often you would see like she would have all this nail polish like on the cover of the book because she was like, you know, testing it and stuff like that. So that's kind of like a weird memory that I have of like my, you know, growing up with my stepmom. But all of my family read. My, my mom read, my dad read, my stepmom read, everybody read. But my stepmom read uh, very like pop culture books that were, you know, on the non, or were on the, the fiction bestseller list. Those were the books that she always read. And um, like as soon as they came out, she read them. And so when I was in ninth grade, we had gone on vacation and I had finished my book really quick and she had brought like three books with her. And um, one of the books that she brought was Lucky by Jackie Collins. And the other book was Fine Things by Daniel Steele, because I read Daniel Steele for a long time when I was like uh, from ninth grade to the end of high school. I think it's so funny. I haven't read a Daniel Steele book in forever. But I don't know what her books are like today, but back in the day, she could weave a story like nobody's business. And I remember the, reading that book, and I remember it was about like a guy whose wife had died, and his last name was Fine, and it was good. So anyway, she had those two books, and I don't remember what the third book was. But I read Fine Things first, and the second one I read was uh, Lucky by Jackie Collins. And I can remember the first time that, like, I read it, and um, there was a, a, I wanted to, I should have had the part open, but the part where um, Lucky, like, walks by the pool and he sees her um, is, like, unbelievable. And, you know, it's just like, when you read this part, and then you, like, read Jackie Collins' other books. And I've read, I mean, Rockstar and Hollywood Wives and all this kind of stuff. I've read so many of them now. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, is this the part what it is? Um, uh, but anyway, it talks about when she gets off the plane. I'm sorry for the break in it. But it talks about when she gets off the plane and she's got this red silk shirt on and these black leather pants and she's got jet black hair. And I remember so vividly those words, jet black hair. And um, she just was like so effortlessly cool that as a character, like I immediately fell in love with her. And this is kind of like very superficial, but on a side note, I mean, I like nice things. I'm not gonna act like I don't. And, uh, but I don't really feel the need in my life to have them today. But um, 
Lucky Santangelo wears a Cartier uh, Santos tank watch. Since the day that I read these books back in the day, well, since I read Lucky, I don't think I ever read Chances back in the day, or I think I started it and didn't finish it. I can't remember. But anyway, because um, this time rereading it felt completely new to me. I don't remember a lot of stuff. Um, the only thing I remember, but it talks about it in so many of the other books, is that her brother was killed. Uh, but anyway, um, so, like, to this day, like, that is my dream watch. All based on Lucky Santangelo. And if you've read these books, okay, if you've read Lucky and Chances and you've read any of the other part of the series, because this Lucky, San the Santangelo series goes on, like, I think for, like, six or eight books. Lucky Santangelo is probably, and I I'm being completely honest, you know, like, we talk about literary fiction and we talk about you know, pop culture, and we talk about young adult, we talk about all these books. Lucky Santangelo is probably one of the most realized characters I have ever read in my entire life. And through all of the books, like, she changes, and she's strong, and for me, at that age, you know, when I had this mother that was really, you know, talking about feminism and things like that, that she really believed in, Lucky Santangelo, as a character, I know this is going to sound totally crazy, but really was like this embodiment of this empowered woman back in the day. So, when you go back and you read Chances, and Chances is fantastic, and Chances is the story of her father, Gino Santangelo, and, um... It goes in there and it talks about how Gino, like, got started and his father and then all these different foster homes that he lived with. And then it goes into how, like, all these legal issues that he had in growing up and how he got into kind of, like, this whole situation of wanting to go to Vegas and start casinos. Or not start casinos, but build hotels, which is what the second one, Lucky, is about. It's really Gino's story, you know? And at the end of it, he has to go out of the country to Israel for a while. And so, um, and I don't want to, if you haven't read it, I don't want to ruin it for you. But Lucky is like, she and her brother are supposed to kind of like be silent and just sign shit off. Like, and she's like, oh no, no, no. I'm taking this company over. I'm going to run this company while he's gone and I'm going to prove to my dad that I can do this. And so... She really is, at that time, okay, and you have to remember, this is like in the 80s, she is really the embodiment of this kind of, like, power woman that we really haven't seen up till this point in literature. I mean, we really haven't seen a CEO kind of taking over all this kind of stuff. And one of my favorite scenes um, in Chances is uh, when, like, she's talking to Costa, who is her dad's, uh, like, assist, like, sec not secretary, he's, like, his, like, assistant. Not assistant, but, like, VP kind of thing. And he says, in, she says in there, like, what do we do? They're trying to get money to raise to start this casino in Las Vegas. And he goes, well, what, she says, well, how would Gino handle this? And Gino's, ba she bas Costa says Gino would get his money. Like, basically, you know, like, he would, like, you know, go over there and say, if you're not going to give us our money, you're going to, like, you know, pay. And so she goes to this guy to try to get the money, and she takes these guys with her, and, uh, like, the guy's like, I'm not going to, he basically is like, I'm not going to pay up, and she's like, if you're not going to pay up, like, there's going to be problems. And the guy wakes up in the middle of the in the middle of the night, okay, and one of these guys has, like, a knife to his, <laughs> his testicles, and she basically says, this is just the beginning, so you better pay up, and he pays up, and then they all pay up, because Costa says if you can get one of them to pay, the rest of them will pay, and she's just as very smart, and she's, like, not afraid, you know, like, and I think that when I was in high school, and I was, you know, being bullied, and I was, I don't know, afraid of my own shadow, and I couldn't be confident that I could read these books, and that's really what, you know, reading and books and literature did for me back then was helped me escape from everything, but when I would read these books, you know, uh, it would take me out of all of that and make me feel like there was a world where I could stand up for myself and be unafraid, if that makes sense. And so, when I was reading these again, it reminded me of all of that, you know? Not just the world of Jackie Collins that she created, this, you know, high glitz world and these characters that really, to be honest, are very highly developed characters. When we get into, you know, Lucky and we start reading about, you know, Lenny and Eden and all these people that are in Olympia, they're highly, highly created characters, you know, that, like, unlike we've never seen before, they're not flat characters, they're three-dimensional. And the stories are so fantastic, and they just kind of weave one into the other. The thing I love about Jackie Collins is that when you're reading one of her novels, they come at you from, like, six different sides. Leah Moyerity does this today in, like, Big Little Lies and all those, The Husband's Secret and things like that, and, and she's very good at it. It takes kind of a genius writer to weave all of these different story ideas together, to turn out at the end and have, like, this kind of aha moment, and Jackie Collins does it so fantastically. I don't want to ruin the books for you. We're going to talk about it in the live stream tomorrow, but I do want to say this one thing. My husband and I 
run a website where we interview people. And today, it's mostly musicians, and he handles it. Back in the day, we interviewed anybody. Like, we would interview people that we were just, like, excited about interviewing. And um, one of the people that we reached out to was Jackie Collins. And, um, you know, she was my dream author. To, she was the one that got me wanting to write books. I would like in my room, I would make poster boards of like magazine clippings and I would come up with, you know, characters that, you know, I would call things like Jewel and Diamond because they were so similar to Lucky, right? I mean, I wanted to write books like Jackie Collins and I would come up with these, I would clip out magazine clippings and I would write outlines for these books that never came to fruition. And so I reached out to her, you know, and, and we got to do this interview through her, you know, through her uh, PR agent, which was fantastic. We actually interviewed her twice. And she was just so down to down to earth and so cool, you know. When you step back from that, you think like this is Joan Collins' sister. I mean, Joan Collins of Dynasty and Jackie Collins' sisters that like fame and fortune. You know, it's very cool. And I just felt so honored, you know, to be able to before she passed away interview her. There will never be another author like Jackie Collins again. There's a lot of great authors out there. There's a lot of people that are doing the same things that she does, you know. But she was a very self-taught author, too. And I can remember interviewing her, and she would say things like, um, you know, when we asked her, like, who her influences were, I remember one of the people she said was Elmore Leonard. And she said, you know, she reads all of his books. And she loved, like, the old books, like the 40s movies of, like, you know, The Maltese Falcon and Casablanca. And when you read her books... There's an element of all of that kind of mystery driven in with this whole kind of glamour of, you know, Hollywood and big money. And she did it fantastically. I gave both books five stars. I would give that 95% because there were no profound moments in these books. But I have to tell you that unlike some of the other books that I've read recently that I've reread that kind of let me down a little bit, this one did not let me down at all. I mean, I reread it and I was like, oh my God, this is, like, I, I have the same feeling I had when I was in ninth grade reading this. It's fantastic. So if you haven't ever taken a journey down the road of, of Jackie Collins, I highly recommend it. Go check it out. Um, join my book club. It's listed below. Tomorrow we're going to start reading uh, Diana Rowland's White, uh, White Trash Zombie. Is that what it's called? I'm so excited. I haven't read it. I've heard great things about it. And um, yeah, we're going to do the live stream at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. I'm very, very excited. We're going to talk about all three books. So come over and if you want to get in the guest stream and talk with me personally and let people think, hear what you have to say about it, I think that would be great. So that's my review of uh, Chances and Lucky, and after the live stream, you guys can hear my review of Richard Layman's Endless Night. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.